Talking today to Helen Kuhn of Indigenous Film Distribution, who are distributors of African film. Helen, what was the big film for you last year that you were handling? Two highlights in particular I think I'd like to flag for last year. The one was an Afrikaans romantic comedy called Semi Soup, which translates to Semi Sweet vernacular language film with English subtitles. First of its kind for here and it did spectacular business. Not necessarily such well known actors, but it really did. Um, hit that nerve with audiences. We did really why, what, why was that? What, what was the story? The story is actually a classic love story, just like romantic comedies always are. Um, boy meets girl, something goes wrong, there's an obstacle, they can't help but like each other and eventually they fall in love. So it's had, it was dealt with beautifully from a, a cinematography point of view, from a costumes point of view, it just looked like a film. It was a proper film. And audiences really responded. So it did just about... And that was across all divides. It wasn't just an Afrikaner audience. Well, you know, the films in, in the local languages tend to not cross over to other language speakers. If you look at something like Fani Faris the Bola, which is the other one I'd like to raise, it's a Zulu film with a little bit of Afrikaans in it. And that film played largely to audiences that are Zulu speaking. So there does seem to be a trend here and a touch point with a particular language group. It doesn't mean it can't cross over. Um, I would say that Fani crossed over a little bit more into other vernacular language speaking groups than something like Semi Sweet did at the time. But the touch point is the language. And what, you, again, what's the story? What's the hook in Fani? Fani is a fish out of water story at the end of the day. It's, it is, in fact, an Afrikaans guy called Fani Furi that falls in love with Denki Makubani, who is Zulu speaking. But she's the independent one. She's really fantastic female uh, role model kind of character, wants to set up her own business. Fani is a little bit more alternative. He does arty cars, if you can imagine that type of thing. And, and how and then does her family react to him? Both families don't know what to do with the situation. So the family drama plays out in a very balanced fashion. The film's got a particularly strong soundtrack as well, which obviously helped. So it gives you the culture clash to an extent, but Again, at the end of the day, these two people are meant to meet and they get on and they're going to get together, regardless of what the families may or may not think. It's interesting with something like Fani Furi versus um, Semi Sweet, is they getting more and more interest from the rest of the world in the festival context and starting to win audience prizes. So there's definitely a bit of a Muriel's Wedding kind of element with that film that audiences are responding to in the rest of the world. And what two films have you got coming up that you're particularly excited about? Well, I think the most exciting one is Kumba, which is a 3D animated film. Second film by the Triggerfish team. They did Zambezia, which released yeah, last year. Yeah, from Zambezia. Exactly. And I have to say, it's just charming. Um, there's not that many animated films coming from Africa or South Africa. This is the third one ever. So we're very much looking forward to that. It's also family content. You know, there's not a lot of family content being made. So it's always a scoop to be able to find family content. Then there's two others which are very, very different. The one is called Inumba Number, which is a Donovan Marsh directed, and it's a it's a snatch lock stock kind of film in a South African context. Some known actors, some you've never seen before, spectacular lead, great action, great tension line. We should get the Tilti audience finally actually responding to this film. So it's um, a thriller. It's a it's a thriller, it's a cop drama thriller with action. Mm. It's difficult to just pin it into one uh, arena, one category. Yeah. But it just you just really go with it. It's fast-paced, it's gritty, it's... It, you know, the film has heart, and you go with it. And, mm. you know, you've got the two cops that work together. There's some very humorous moments in it as well. Mm. Working together, trying to... It's, a, it's got the highest element. Somebody's trying to steal a lot of money, and they're going to stop them. So... It's also great to have Presley train a guy in a film again since Tsotsi, but and he's mm -hmm. the kind of lovable, huggable cop, mm -hmm. and across him plays Sabu, who is a new young actor from a series called Class Act, and he's the cool dude guy. Mm -hmm. So it's really fantastic. It should play very well to younger audiences. So those two are particularly exciting. There is always in the mix um, Afrikaans language titles. I mean, they... Honestly, uh, is an avalanche of them being made. We're actually mm. at the point where there's too many. Yeah. Now, as, uh, as these things go, they're now starting to cannibalize each other. But we've got quite a nice crossover one called Confetti, which is a mixture of Afrikaans and English. And 
it just looks spectacular based on everything we've seen so far. Mm. So a wedding film, ultimately. Weddings are, it's the golden thread, I often say. It's something universal. I, I Everybody, Exactly. Everyone can relate to both. So we're really looking forward to that. And we've, we haven't had a, a wedding film and it really plays as well as a big fat Greek wedding or for this audience in South Africa. And this one will get crossover because of the mix of language. So you won't have exclusively an Afrikaans language audience actually responding to it. 